let's start uh, again uh, i left earlier at this point only right so i believe that let's start from here so this point is itself is like um, the best way to check the or profile performance is use the tool right there are separate tools available one of them are dot dress which i'm going to show you the screenshot here also so a performance profiler is your safe knife right when it comes to performance you can use it to detect performance problems and pinpoint to the specific cause especially this is very very important when you are working for very large system especially distributed system and large system where million of millions line of code is for one component so <clears throat> And what would be the benefit of using these tools like time spent in each method you can calculate easily, time in SQL request you can easily calculate, time in JIT, time in garbage collection, time for various input output requests, file and networks conditions or states, time waiting for a log to release. I mean, because in distributed system, asynchronous execution things and synchronous things are two different uh, ball game and both requires different kind of attention, right? So you have to understand these things. Then uh, if you are working on, diff uh, especially on .NET platform, you know that what is the importance of reflection code, right? So so these things you can easily trace from the dot .trace and this is the screenshot given is here. Uh, it is showing that this, if I want to go to track the actual time expand in get input, I can go deep dive, deep dive, deep dive like that. And by just clicking on the, on the get input, first you click here, it will open something like that. Then you go for reflection, I mean like that. Okay, so get, then again go to the, so the git, if, if I explain it correctly, then this is like the method getting put took 22.6 seconds. Out of it, only 29 milliseconds where its own, rest is with the other method calls. And these things can be further analyzed. If you click over that, then this will further give you the detail, like where it is actually time is exhausted. So like get input is calling another method, which is get input, which is calling another method, do events, and which is calling event, 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 raise event safety, like these things, three calls, and then after that handle module load evented. So here we see that <coughs> get input called another get input, which called do events, which called event, and so on and so forth, right? So we can see how much time each individual method took, in millisecond and percentage. In summary, a performance profiler is extremely useful to find and fix performance problem. So in a nutshell, this is the conclusion of this point that performance profiler is extremely useful to find and fix performance problem, okay? The third point which uh, is here uh, is the mind the GC pressure. Mind the GC pressure. A garbage collector is under pressure sometime and that situation is really, really performance bottleneck. So we have to identify it and then try to remove these kind of GC pressure within the code. So how we will do, let's let's learn it. So garbage collection is a very much tied to performance, right? Um, the person who is experienced in Java and .NET, they are very well know this situation, right? I dare to say that the most important thing to understand in a .NET process performance wise is the GC. If you don't understand GC execution, probably you, will, you might face lots of hard time in performance uh, improvement. While allocation are very cheap, GC is expensive and we should constantly keep an eye on it, right? Especially, specifically, we should be looking at two metrics. First is uh, percentage time spent in GC and second is Gen2 collection frequency. Here is why. The percent time, the percentage time spent in GC is, is almost like uh, we would say that if you keep thing in the minimum or process will spend more time issues and code, then, then generally speaking, a healthy process should spend up to 10 to 20% in GC only. But if uh, your percentage time is higher in your case, that means somehow your code is not performance oriented. I mean, something is wrong with the code and you should try to optimize it so that the ideal situation for uh, GC time percentage time would be between 10 to 20%. If it is higher in your case, while, while profiling, you will get that data. And then according to data, you should treat the standard uh, minimum to maximum range of percentage time usage in GC would be 10 to 15%, maximum 20%, that's it. So now the next point is Gen2 collection frequency. Okay, this is also very important. So GC zero level and one level you can ignore, but Gen two, GC level two is very important for performance point of view. So GC two collection frequency should be kept to a minimum. A Gen two collection is also known as full garbage collection. It is very expensive because it reclaims objects in all generations. It reclaims the generation zero, generation one, both, and itself generation two, right? So if you have a lot of Gen two collection, your process will be very slow and can notably hang in runtime. So we will see it further in the tool well, while discussing the tool in more detail. But for now, you just, I mean, consider these two points, percentage time spent in GC and Gen2 collection frequency. If these two are under the range, which is which is to be expected, then you will consider that your code quality is, performance point of view is good. If it is not, then you need improvement definitely. Okay, so that is what we can conclude here. Rest, let's move on. So we have three prime directives in dealing with GC. Keep allocation to a minimum, Try to have allocated object garbage collected as soon as possible. Try to have allocated object garbage collection as soon as possible. Have as little 
as possible for Gen 2 collection as possible, right? So Gen 2 level do not, I mean, it requires full garbage collection, right? So the frequency of Gen 2 should be very, very minimum. It's only you must require, then only you do. And even though you do, you should try to delay as much as possible, right? Okay, so, so Gen 2 and Gen 1, mostly whatever I have explained to you for Gen 2 collection frequency, the same is valid for Gen 1 also. <coughs> Sorry. There are many techniques and best practices to achieve that. And uh, if I see the, basically, uh, how to uh, avoid GC pressure and improve performance in GC in CSR.net. So one thing is this, right? And this is very much required. In fact, uh, I have already discussed many times this in my earlier video also. Like whenever possible, please set the initial capacity to your dynamic collection. Usually uh, developer is forgetting it because uh, uh, what, what would happen, right? That's that kind of mindset people have. So to avoid that kind of mindset, this is very, very fundamentally required. Whenever, whenever you see any such uh, uses in your, any such dynamic collection usage in your code, be aware that if you already know the capacity, whatever the maximum capacity you think that this container can hold, you should always set capacity upfront for that dynamic collection. For example, in .NET provides a lot of great collection types like list, dictionary, hash set, all these collections have dynamic size capacity. That means they automatically expand in size as you add more items. While this functionality is very convenient, it is not great for memory management also. So whenever the collection reaches its size limit, it will allocate new larger memory buffer usually an IRL double size. This is the, but this is definitely depend on your platform and compiler. So this is not generic, but usually yes, double size is okay to accept it. And that means an additional allocation and deallocation happen, right? And then copy is also required to add from old container data to new container data. So these will heavily penalize your performance of code. So definitely, definitely you should care. And this is the benchmarking data it is given here. Uh, I can have this sample code. Uh, if you go to the, like um, my repository, you will find that. I will put the repository, uh, repository link here in the comment. The second important thing is use array pool for short lived large arrays. This is also a very good concept. Okay. So this is also a very good concept. Use array pool for short lived large, large array. Allocation of arrays and the invitable deallocation can be quite costly. Performing these allocation in high frequency will cause GC pressure and hard performance and hard performance. An elegant solution is the system buffer array pool class found in the system buffer nugget. The idea is pretty simple to be the to be to be the thread pool concept, right? So, uh, no, 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 just wait. What I'm trying to say here is that uh, this system dot buffer dot array pool is nothing new. It's just a kind of like just earlier in C plus plus you are using thread pool, right? So that kind of concept only. So I mean, only thing is like you are not forcing system to deallocate de or clean memory immediately. So the uses of GC is avoided here by using this pool, right? That is what uh, we are expecting here. And uh, you can say that this code has, uh, I mean, this too, here you are using a uh, normal array and you are using shared array, I mean, array pool, right? And this is like, the concept is uh, uh, use, I mean, take this memory on rent and once you are done, this will be returned. So once you are done, just call the pool return. So this will introduce lots of efficiency in your code when your array size is large. For a small array size might not, uh, um, you will see the much difference, but for larger size, you will definitely going to see the many, many, I mean, significant difference in time performance. And so these are the differences here. Regular array is taking this, shared pool array is taking almost half, right? Here also you'll see that regular array is taking uh, 18, 18.87 when uh, the shared pool is taking 1.5. So like see the things as you grow also 100 integers, a small difference, even half bigger difference, 1000 integers, lots of difference, almost uh, 12 to 15, 12 to 13 times or 15 times, right? This is too, too bad performance, right? If you are using the normal array. So I would suggest you, please try to use this concept very uh, appropriately because it is putting you lots of penalty on your code performance. The third is use of a strict, I mean, sorry, third is use of structs instead of classes. Uh, this is, I have interest, I mean, I uh, I really uh, tried to understand this concept. Even I tried it on my, I mean, ID, but I would not got significant result here in, in case of release version. So I'm not sure, but I will try again, once again with this concept and we'll check. But in this case, like uh, this author is saying that it is creating almost 2.6785 normal case with class and with a struct it is 0.6. So we should try it also. Right. Avoid finalizers. So, <clears throat> welcome back. Uh, 
I was reading about the avoid finalizer, right? So my opinion here is uh, in C sharp, finalizer is a little bit expensive. And this is expensive because of several reasons. So finalizer is basically automatically promoted a generation by the garbage collector. This means they can't be garbage collected in Gen 0, which is the fastest generation. Okay. So the finalizer is placed in final in a finalizer queue handled by a single dedicated thread. This can cause problem if some finalizer runs for a long time or throws an exception. To prove how terrible finalizer can be for performance, consider the following benchmark. So is, in, in this example, you can easily see that I have one class simple. Okay. Another class is simple with finalizer. So here it is simple with finalizer and it is only simple, right? So it's finalizer, I mean, destructor, right? And it is not uh, like without destructor and those things like that. So prime and the three uh, member variables considered here as item sample and uh, simple with finalizer instance two. So, and after that, uh, like, public void allocate simple method where we are just generating uh, items is one lakh. Yes. So one lakh object instance we are creating of uh, simple class without any finalizer. And also we are creating thousand class one lakh class instance with finalizer. And that let's check the time performance. So allocated allocate simple with finalizer is uh, took only 17.24 US microsecond, but simple allocate simple with finalizer in sense like one lakh instance is taking time almost 2588.75 microsecond a small deviation could be possible when you will test with this uh, i mean in your system but in large by in large you will see these kind of ratio of difference might be almost same in your case also right and us here is thousand us is equivalent to one millisecond so this is like 2.5 millisecond, though in other case, it is almost negligible, 0, 0, 0, 0, something like that. So as you can see, there is a 1 is, uh, 1 is to 320 ratio in favor of class without finalizer. This is very simple, but still very intuitive. Sometimes finalizer are unavoidable. For example, they are often used in the dispose pattern. Okay, in such cases, make sure to dispose the finalizer when it is no longer required like this. So. How do you do it? Public void dispose. Make dispose is true. The actual dispose functionality. And then GC suppress finalize this. Now the finalizer won't be called. Okay. Another way of optimizing the GC uses is use stack allocate of sort lift array allocation so so instead of doing this on heap let's try to allocate this on a stack so this is the uh, syntax of getting things on stack right so vector struct pointer vectors is equal to stack allocate vector struct struct pipe and five times you can do something something and then with stack alloc allocated span so span vector struct vectors struct stack alloc vector string five and that's it so now if you see the comparison value with new it is 0.14 with stack allocate span this is 10.1 and here with a stack allocate it is 0 0.082 so this is i mean performance is better with a stack alloc but uh, you will see that the best is uh, in stack with a stack alloc without any span. Okay, so a stock stack alloc is about twice as fast as a regular instruction instantiation when increasing the number of items from five to hundred. Used the difference is even greater when you have more numbers of items. So learn more about stack allocate here. So if you have a further interest, you can go for you can click here and. Uh, you can try to learn a stack alloc because all these things I have not done. So uh, you can check and uh, hmm. another is use a string builder, but not always. So yeah, this is okay. 
I mean, this is I have already gone through in like um, Java and other place also where uh, immutable string has concept, right? So uh, in this case, string builder is the better choice too because you want editable string, right? So that is what uh, this uh, sixth point is saying. Use a string in turning in various specific cases. So about 60% of the human body is water. Similarly, about 70% of a .NET application is a string. This makes this, this makes optimizing strings one of the most important aspect of memory management. The .NET runtime has a hidden optimization for literal strings with the same value. It uses the same reference. For example, consider the following code string A is equal to table and string B is also is equal to table. It seems like A and B will be allocated to different objects, but the CLR common language runtime uh, will allocate just one object which both A and B will refer. This optimization is called a string interning. These are two positive, there are two positive side effect of this string interning. You have memory of using just one object. It's cheaper to compare it between the strings. A comparison first check for reference equality. Since both A and B are referencing same object, the comparison will return true without actually checking the string content. So this optimization is done just for a string literals. For example, when you write something like this, it is not done for strings that are calculated at runtime. The reason and look at the sample. So without a string interning and with a string interning, okay. And you can see that more modification and then after return, you, you definitely have a good point here. So 100 items, this one and like 10,000, 1000 items have uh, still, I mean, differences there. Avoid memory leaks. Summary, I hope you got value from the men's and tips and tricks. You probably may notice that all of the above optimization make use of one or more of these core concepts. Allocation should be avoided if possible. Reusing memory is better than allocating new memory. Allocating on the stack is faster than allocating on the heap. That's it. So thank you for watching and let's come back again to continue from here. So, okay. Uh, so on backing of it, the fourth number of point, which is mind the jitter. What do you mean by this? JIT, right? JIT, Java just in time compilation, J jitter. Or, yeah. So <clears throat> let's quickly finish it. Uh, get to know about the notable .NET performance tools, performance counter, and HW events, right? Performance counter. Then this is very good optimization. Most of the time, developer is doing this optimization only. Uh, especially in industry, only one solution for improvement. Usually, lower, I mean, junior folks are always thinking about these kind of optimization only. Okay, cache it, something like, and then use it. There is no, there is no harm in saying it that this is one of the key approach for improving your performance, right? Improving your code performance. If you remember, being a coder, you already know that uh, if some steps is already calculated, going again and recalculating the steps is not a wise decision, right? And that would be solved by memoization or DP table. The similar way, similar on the similar approach, uh, whenever you think that save, I mean, doing one extra effort will save the time. I, I uh, suggest you all, please proceed for that kind of optimization. This seems to be, this is looking easy and not, not might you think that this will not make more sense, but when you implement it, this will improve truly, truly big performance in your product. And it is happening. Uh, uh, I think we all in our in, in our experience have done here and there this caching concept, either in terms of like uh, caching at DP table or memoization to improve the recursive nature of program or anything else in multiple situation you might have done and you have experienced on it. So that's why this caching is one of the good way, especially for developer to improve the performance. In fact, not only here, like you have seen that lots of caching in distributed system happen before a uh, database query, right? And if you are very sure that your data is not changing frequently, I, 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 I mean, encourage you to do lot many caching as much as possible because that caching itself will, will help you to avoid a direct call to the database. And this will definitely, definitely going to improve your overall type performance.
UI optimization, like optimized UI responsiveness is also uh, one of the key area to work upon. When a user interacts with UI, any response under 0.1 to 0.2 second feels instantaneously. One second is the limit for the user's flow of thought to stay inter uninterrupted. Anything more than one second, the user feels they are no longer in control of the intersection. Optimize only the critical path. So here is the uh, one problem I can see most of the cases that uh, people, I mean, especially junior folks understand it, that it is important, but they are trying to solve the all paths, which even not justifiable to do the change. Like th th there are many paths, which is not going to improve at all your performance, time performance, then it is better to avoid those path. No need to change those path. Change only those path, which is responsible for creating delay, creating a, a weak time performance for your software and product. Otherwise, mostly it should be avoided in general, right? Okay, so ninth is micro optimized hot paths. Hot paths are code section in which most of the execution time is spent. They often execute very frequently. While micro optimization are usually unnecessary, hot paths are the one place where they are very helpful. There are lots of lots of optimization you can do here. Are some of them are avoid link in favor of regular array. So I would not say prefer four loops loops over for each that is correct allocate the little memory as possible you can make use of struct right allocation you can use shared memory like system builder array pool to ensure memory the string builder is also definitely definitely going to uh, recommended case right buffer block copy this also may create a not not a problem right mm. so as a conclusion we should say that a big part of almost any application is the database. DB optimization are obviously important, but they are not directly related to .NET. It is a huge subject on its own, which I will leave for another post. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you.